I want to make a quick announcement about Locals, which I had mentioned I started a community there. I realized that there is a minimum amount of support that someone has to give to be able to actually comment on any of my posts on Locals. I've set it as low as I can, which is $2 a month. If you decided to give a one-time donation, which gets you like one month access to commenting, I believe. I hope that that amount is also only $2. I didn't start the community for money. I really just wanted a place to share updates with you guys. So you can still join the community and see what I post there, even if you can't comment. And I will be posting updates about what I'm reading and scripts that I'm working on, things like that. So if you want to just see the updates, even if you can't comment, for example, I shared the hate mail I got in my Instagram DMs, then feel free to become a member on Locals without having to support me financially. And now on to the video. Hello, lovely internet strangers. Today, I will once again be talking about the publishing industry, which I talked about in my last two videos on sensitivity readers. Today, I will discuss a related topic, hashtag own voices. I mentioned this topic briefly in my videos on sensitivity readers, but it's a topic that really merits its own video, more than one video actually, and I will have to gloss over certain topics that will further merit their own videos at some point. Like the topic of sensitivity readers, I have experience with the own voices topic from my own experience in publishing, but I also do my research, and it is another topic that I have tried to eliminate from my brain, and I must dredge all of this up for you, my loyal viewers. I'm going to approach this topic in a similar fashion to how I handled sensitivity readers, which is to give an overview of what own voices is, to explain the justifications and arguments from the proponents of own voices, and then later, probably in the following videos, I will discuss some of the problems with own voices, as well as some details about the way the publishing industry has changed that people may not know about that puts all of this into context. Like my previous videos, I will not be showing the sources on screen because I aggregated from many sources, all of which will be linked in the description below. I have no plan for how I'm going to divide up this series, I'm just going to talk and figure it out later. So I will mention certain points that are going to come up later, but may not come up in this specific video, but may come up in a subsequent video. So bear with me. I'm doing my best to bring this important information to you because most of the opinions on this topic that come from people inside the publishing industry are from people who are super woke, SJW, whatever other terms you want to throw out there. And even people who I've seen writing critically about it who are from within the industry are authors, not people who actually worked on the publishing side. With that intro, come with me to 2015, to the genesis of hashtag own voices. Own voices was a hashtag coined on September 6th, 2015 by Corinne Duvise. I'm guessing on the pronunciation, I do know that she's Dutch. She also identifies as white, cisgender, disabled slash autistic, bisexual slash biromantic slash queer, atheist, and a woman, and she uses she, her pronouns. If you watch my previous videos on sensitivity, readers and you have a good memory, you might remember that the nonprofit We Need Diverse Books was started in 2014, so the own voices hashtag was something that came after. Corinne came up with this hashtag when a bunch of conversations were happening on Twitter where people were requesting books written by people of marginalized identities with marginalized characters. So she coined this hashtag to make it easier for people to find what they were looking for. Specifically, an own voices book is referring to a book where the author is from a marginalized or underrepresented group and they are writing about their own own experiences from their own perspective, rather than someone from an outside perspective writing as a character from an underrepresented group. To call your book Own Voices, it is not necessary that every experience your character goes through is also something that you are going through, but it is necessary that you are from the marginalized community your protagonist is also from. Don't worry, we are going to break down what an Own Voices book is in depth. The originator of the hashtag, Corinne, has a page on her author website explaining own voices, possibly because she's white, possibly just her personal preference, but she's not super eager to essentially claim ownership of the hashtag. It was just something that she created to help discussions, help promote certain kinds of books, but people must have sent her a lot of messages asking about own voices, so she made this FAQ. I will not share it all, but I will highlight the salient points. So to be an own voices book, it is important that the author of the book has the identity in question. For example, if the identity is autistic, it can't be that their spouse is autistic, their child, their sibling, their parent, neighbor, friend, etc. is autistic. It has to be the author who is autistic. 
Got it? As far as what constitutes an identity, it should be somewhat specific. That is to say, if the character is blind, the author should also be blind. Not the character is blind and the author is autistic and both are disabled, hashtag own voices. No, that would not work. Similarly, it would be own voices if the character and the author were both African American, rather than if the character is African American, but the author is Korean American and they're both people of color, that does not count as own voices. She also says that you only have to have one marginalized identity in common with your character, not all of them. So you could be a neurotypical Muslim author writing about an autistic Muslim protagonist, and that would count as own voices because there's a marginalized aspect of their identity that is shared. Still following me? Awesome. Following on this point, she includes a question in her FAQ that says, if my character and I share one type of identity, but the character is also marginalized in ways that I'm not, wouldn't it be misleading to call it hashtag own voices? Aren't we all dying to know? Please enlighten us, Corinne. Her opinion is that it's about how you frame it. So if a white trans woman wrote about a Chinese American trans girl, the book could be described in different ways. You could tweet about it as follows. Cool heist book features a Chinese American trans girl, hashtag own voices. But this would imply its own voices for both identities, i.e. the author is Chinese American and trans, which the author is not. So this framing is deceptive. Instead, you could tweet, check out cool heist book. It's got a hashtag own voices trans girl lead. This would be accurate. Alternatively, you could tweet, cool heist book features a Chinese American trans girl. The trans aspect is hashtag own voices. She says this is both accurate and forthcoming, allowing for a more complete description of the character without misleading potential readers. She says you need to be specific and clear. She has a follow-up question in her FAQ that says, that feels like it ignores the way identities can intersect. It allows authors to claim books as hashtag own voices, even though the authors are still writing outside of their own experiences. Corinne says that she shares these concerns because marginalized identities can't be easily separated from one another. The identities intersect and inform each other. Someone who is black and deaf will have vastly different experiences from those who are white and deaf and from those who are black and hearing. She doesn't feel that there's an easy solution to which books can or should count as own voices. She said we could restrict usage of hashtag own voices to only describe books where every single identity of the author and character matches, but she worries this would come with major downsides. It would significantly cut down on the number of books that can use the tag, which would make valuable books far more difficult to find for those looking for them, and it would negatively affect both marginalized readers and authors. It would also place even more pressure on marginalized authors to write about characters who are purely like them. That is something that I will be discussing later in this video or possibly my next video about this topic, so put a pin in that. After five years of following the hashtag own voices discussion and seeing the way these conversations have affected marginalized people in the industry, she thinks the best solution is what she said previously in the FAQ to just be specific and clear when you describe the own voices novels to allow people to make informed decisions about what they're comfortable reading, publishing, or supporting. She also notes in a similar vein to something I mentioned in the sensitivity readers video that a book being able to claim the own voices label does not place it or its author above criticism. It's not an automatic seal of approval, authenticity, or quality. We can use a broad definition of hashtag own voices while still having important discussions about the effects of authors writing outside their lane. Put a pin in that also. That's going to come up later in my discussion of own voices. I'm sharing this FAQ from the originator of the own voices hashtag because later I'm going to discuss ways that the own voices hashtag has kind of gotten away from its origins. So I want to establish clearly what the originator intended for this hashtag. So a few important things about her intentions for this hashtag. All she really intended was to center the voices that matter most. Because historically speaking, it's been extremely common for marginalized characters to be written by authors who are not part of that marginalized group and who are clueless despite having good intentions. So many of the portrayals are lacking at best, damaging at worst, and that society tends to favor the privileged voices even regarding a situation they have zero experience with, and thus those are the authors that get published. So she never intended own voices to be about policing the privileged authors or pressuring marginalized authors to write about any particular topic or character. She specifically does not talk about own voices authors. Some authors choose to identify that way because they only write about characters from their own marginalized group, but many authors may write some books that are own voices and some that are not own voices. For her, it was simply a subcategory of diverse novels that she wanted to highlight. And this point is extremely important for what I'm going to discuss later in this series, which is that nobody is under any obligation to disclose any part of their identity. She believes safety and privacy are essential, and that if you have information about an author's identity that isn't public, 
public, you should not be labeling their books hashtag own voices without the author's explicit permission. I.e. if the author has written a book about a gay character and you know that the author is gay, you should not be labeling it hashtag own voices without their permission if they are not out. And that is going to be a big topic later on. I know I'm teasing you all, so strap in. We've got a lot to cover. All right, let's further clarify how you can determine if your manuscript is own voices. The first question to ask yourself is, am I a member of an underrepresented slash marginalized slash diverse group? If the answer is no, you have your answer. Your manuscript is not own voices. And we're going to need a definition of diverse. And most people who discuss this topic will use the definition of diversity as put out by the nonprofit We Need Diverse Books. And the definition is as follows, quote, we recognize all diverse experiences, including, but not limited to, LGBTQIA, native, people of color, gender diversity, people with disabilities, and ethnic, cultural, and religious minorities. Got it? All right. So if the answer is yes, and you are a member of an underrepresented slash marginalized slash diverse group, you must now ask yourself, is my main character or protagonist, if you prefer, also a member of this underrepresented slash marginalized slash diverse group? If the answer is yes, then your manuscript is own voices. An example they give is that if you are a Mexican American woman, if your main character is a Mexican American boy, that would count because the marginalized identity of being Mexican American is represented in your character and yourself. Something that does not count as own voices is if you are a woman and your main character is a woman. The post author says that while women may be a marginalized group, a book about a woman by a woman, if there are no additional marginalizations, i.e. she's LGBT, not white, disabled, etc., doesn't bring diversity to the bookshelf. Women in general aren't an underrepresented group in the book world. Another example of something that would not be own voices is if you are a lesbian and your daughter is adopted and your book is about someone who's been adopted and has two moms. The reason why this is not own voices is because the author is not someone who has been adopted. So they do not share the underrepresented identity of being adopted with the main character. They do share an identity with a secondary character, i.e. they are a lesbian mom, and that will likely mean that they can write that secondary character from experience, but for own voices, it needs to be the protagonist. Just because you have a family member with an identity does not make your work own voices. Are you guys following me? Awesome. So as I mentioned, this hashtag definitely took on a life of its own once Corinne originated it. Very quickly, it became a movement of sorts as people were speaking out in support of the hashtag and the idea behind it. People on Goodreads created lists of own voices books to read. This is still a thing you can find now. Goodreads is a topic I've mentioned before that needs its own video and a lot of Goodreads is trash, but I really like lists on Goodreads. If you really are looking for something specific, if you're really looking for books with a bisexual main character, you'll find it there. If you're looking for non-Western fantasy books, you'll find them there. And so if own voices is your thing, cool. Cool. People have made lists, you can go find them. People also started to participate in own voices reading challenges, meaning that they were challenging themselves to read a bunch of books that were own voices and not just keep reading the same white cis heck characters that they'd always been reading. Something else that happened was that hashtag own voices manuscripts started being requested frequently by literary agents using the MSWL hashtag on Twitter. MSWL stands for manuscript wish list. I'm not sure of the exact or origins of the hashtag, but I think it probably cropped up around 2016, so maybe a year or so after hashtag own voices appeared. Literary agents use hashtag MSWL for everything that they're looking for, not just diverse things. There's a website, mswishlist.com, which I will link in the description, which aggregates hashtag MSWL tweets, which is very convenient for authors that are looking to query. The request can be general or specific. I will give you examples. A general example is this person requesting hot paranormal romance. Someone else is requesting something much more specific. They would love a retelling of Paradise Lost. So some of the MSWL requests for own voices stories are just general, basically saying they're looking for hashtag own voices and nothing much else. Some are more specific. One person says they would love to see more light, fun, contemporary YA and YA rom-coms in my inbox. Hashtag own voices a plus. Another example, I would love to see more own voices disability rep in middle grade and YA, especially for the deaf and hard of hearing community. Someone else is asking for hashtag own voices black romance. But my favorite one that I see on the first page of the website is someone who mentions that next year is the 100th anniversary of the discovery of King Tut. So they are really hungry for a hashtag own voices kid archaeologist middle grade. Bonus points for critique of how museums often steal artifacts. So if you're Indian and you want to write about an Indian kid who's an archaeologist, this is the agent for you. Or if you're black and you want to write about a black kid who's an archaeologist, this is the agent for you. So like I said, 
MSWL can be super helpful, but you will see a lot of this kind of stuff ever since own voices became a thing. And like I just shared, some of these are so specific that they are very much long shots. And this is true not just of the ones that are the diversity requests. Now, like I did with the sensitivity readers, I'm going to give the justification by the supporters of own voices. So this perspective comes from 2018, a few years after the hashtag started. This person is citing statistics from a study about the contents of books. This data is apparently from the Cooperative Children's Book Center, which I've never heard of. So their stats as of 2018 was that of the books with African-American main characters, only 29.41% were hashtag own voices, which means written by actual real life, which they capitalized, African-Americans. Similarly, of the books with Latinx main characters, only 33.8% were hashtag own voices and so on and so forth. If you're reading this thinking, so what? How did they know? Consider this. White people are still telling the stories of POC. On one hand, this is good because in the past, POC stories weren't being told at all. So we have the first impulse to sit down and shut up because as POC, we've gotten some of what we've been asking, begging for. Our stories must be told. We are part of the fabric of this nation and we want to be represented in kid lit. Why then are we complaining about hashtag own voices? By complaining, I think she means clamoring for hashtag own voices. Here's why. I firmly believe that stories told from our perspective are the only ones that should be called our stories. This is our right as storytellers, as people from a particular group, whether it is racial or sexual or other. We are the ones with those lived experiences that need to be shared and celebrated and explored, not someone whose intent is to conquer and appropriate those stories, just as our lands and bodies were conquered and appropriated centuries ago. I mentioned in my previous video how much I love the word educate, and let me just tell you that bodies is another one of those words that I just can't get enough of. The resistance to hashtag own voices by predominantly white authors has been swift and horrific, according to this post author. So nobody should write alien stories because we're not alien is the common refrain. Or animals? Yes, writing about aliens or animals or leprechauns is okay. Writing about people of color whose communities you're not part of is not okay because we have cultural context and histories and generational pain that has shaped us. Aliens, animals, and leprechauns don't. To be equated thus is an insult, but not not as insulting as taking over our stories and writing them. Let's be clear, many of the authors I'm talking about are my friends, my colleagues, my mentors. I write this not from a place of anger, but from a place of gentle reprimand, a reminder that we can do better. When these people say we, they always mean you you can do better. In fact, I've found that many white readers and writers are trying to do better. If you're one of those who'd rather be on the right side of the hashtag own voices struggle, here's what you can do. I'm sure everyone watching this video is incredibly curious. Here we go. Learn about obstacles POC face in careers like publishing. This may mean getting out of your comfort zone and understanding things like systemic racism or microaggressions or cultural biases. Seek out aspiring POC creatives and help support them. This could be through mentoring them, critiquing their manuscripts, or just being there as a sounding as they try to get published. This could be a POC student in your classroom or a friend. I mean, sure, mentor people, whatever. Support POC creatives in their work, shout about their work, buy their work, and review their work. If you have the choice between a book written by a POC versus one written by a white author, you should know who to support. It's not rocket science. Could it be racism though? I wasn't gonna promote your work, but then I learned that you're a POC, so even though I think your book is mediocre, I'm gonna shout about it from the rooftops. You're welcome. Give POC creatives a seat at the table. Sometimes this can be in the form of referrals for illustrators or passing on a work for hire opportunity. Sometimes this means co-writing a book with someone else. There are so many ways and all of them are risks. Take them. This point is something that comes up a lot. Accept that you may not be the best person to create something. If you have a great idea about a book with a main character who's not white, don't automatically think you the perfect person to write it. There is a perfect POC to write it, so find someone to refer or suggest. Let's think this through. I have an idea about a story about a black kid. I'm not qualified to write it, so let me look around for one of my black author friends and say, hey, I had this idea for a story about a black kid. Since you're black, why don't you write it? I think you would be the perfect POC to write this story. Can't see how that wouldn't work out just ever so perfectly. This person concludes by saying that hashtag own voices 
was created to give people of color the same opportunities that others have. It's a reminder that not only is the story important, but also who tells that story. It means understanding when to sit down and let someone else talk. It's about acceptance and empathy and well-being, all things we want to teach our children. And man, does this person just sound empathetic as all get out. Truly an inspiration we can all learn from. I found another post by a publishing professional who says that the reason own voices creators are so important is because as marginalized people, we're the best authority on telling our own stories. It's great that more people are talking about how to write authentic, sensitive stories outside their experience and getting sensitivity readers involved, but it's also important that marginalized people are able to tell their own stories. And that's what hashtag own voices does. It allows us to be a voice in our own storytelling when stories about marginalized communities have historically been told by privileged people. This person shares their own experience because they're part of the LGBTQ plus and disability communities. And when they were a young person and a reader, they would read stories that feature these identities and just didn't ring true to them. And they would later find out that the writer did not identify the way that their characters did. And unsurprisingly, a lot of these inaccurate and harmful portrayals made me feel worse about being a queer disabled teenager. I'm so glad this movement is gaining traction now because I can only imagine the kids and teens were able to find that many more books that accurately reflect their experiences. Now I have nothing against people writing stories that are gonna reflect experiences of many people and make certain people feel less alone. But I also have to wonder if the reason that this person was so traumatized by these portrayals is maybe because they were an insecure teenager and maybe they're still an insecure adult. And that will come up later in this series. Put a pen in that as well. This person does also bring up the fact that the publishing industry is still extremely white because she thinks that a lot of marginalized creators are wary of having their work read and rejected by people who don't share their experiences. The post author says, one thing I think I bring to the table as a multiply marginalized person, that's a mouthful, is the firsthand experience of what it's like to be queer, disabled, and low income. I know the fears that people in those communities commonly have about what's being published, and I'm always willing to listen and learn more. I've spoken to disabled writers who have been told by editors that their characters weren't relatable enough because of their disability. Maybe they weren't. Maybe the focal point of the character was their disability and they didn't actually flesh them out and give them universal human qualities and struggles and desires that most people could relate to. Publishing is a business. We will come back to this point as well. This post author concludes that I always check my privilege and listen to and amplify voices in marginalized communities I'm not a part of. I think that there's a lot of improvement that can happen from within the industry if we actively make it more accessible for marginalized people to take part in, because then there won't be as much of a barrier between the diverse author and the privileged gatekeeper who doesn't understand their experience. I found another post, this one by an author who's disabled. They say, why are hashtag own voices books important though? We talk a lot about needing windows and mirrors for our kids. Do they really care who's behind the books? Isn't it enough to read about diverse characters no matter who's writing them? In short, no, it isn't enough. Nothing will ever be enough for these people. If you take away nothing else, from me talking about these topics, that's one thing you should keep in mind. There's a long history of majority group authors, white, abled, straight, cisgender, male, etc., writing outside their experience to tell diverse stories. Sometimes the characters and stories they create are wonderful, but many times they're rife with stereotypes, tropes, and harmful portrayals. Time and again, marginalized people have seen their stories taken from them, misused, and published as authentic, while marginalized authors have had to jump hurdle after hurdle to be published themselves. Many feel they must fight to receive even a fraction of the pay, promotion, and praise that outsiders get for writing diverse character stories, and that's when they're allowed in the door at all. Even when portrayals of diverse characters by majority group authors are respectfully and accurately done, there's an extra degree of nuance and authority that comes with writing from lived experience. Another important phrase, those books that are hashtag on voices have an added richness to them precisely because the author shares an identity with the character. The author has the deepest possible understanding of the intricacies, the joys, the difficulties, the pride, the frustration, and every other possible facet of that particular life because the author has actually lived it. Yes, every single person from an identity category has the exact same experience. So obviously they can write with the deepest possible understanding. This person is a wheelchair user and they say, I'm intimately familiar with enduring and combating ableism, navigating an inaccessible world, exploring disabled identity and embracing disability pride. I know not only which tropes to avoid, but how much those tropes hurt because I've been hurt by them before. I can list a whole host of tiny everyday details about the physical and emotional reality of my disability, the secondary research is unlikely to surface. I have a lifetime of experiences, positive, negative, neutral, and complicated mixtures of all of the above to draw from when I write a fuller, more authentic wheelchair using character. We'll come back to the idea of tropes hurting you and how that's a personal problem.
problem. But this person is clear to point out that they're not saying that authors should not write outside their own experiences, that it's not about policing what authors write, just about being aware of the stories that we seek out and promote as readers. And because of the history of marginalized groups, it's important that we don't ignore diverse voices by focusing only on diverse content and ignoring the perspectives of the people writing the diverse content. That's it for this video. All those things I told you to put a pin in, we will come back to them in the next video or the video after that if I decide to make this a three-parter. We'll see what happens in the editing room. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Comment down below, DM me on Twitter, send me an email, whatever you prefer. If you liked this content, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe and I will have more content for you very soon.